because the range is uh, switched when you inverse the function. When you inverse the function, the demand and range switch. So everything that was true about your x's is now going to be true about your y's. Everything that's true about your y's is now going to be true about your x's. x's, and they go back and forth like that. <laughs> Bad <laughs> So it makes sense that they will indeed cross, cross. Okay, so let's just see. Up two over three. Up two over three. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, oh, you know, I really, really, really want them to cross. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really, really want them to cross. There we go. Oh, I, I really want them to cross. Find that point. Mm. That's why I want them to cross. Find that point. And I don't mean like, oh, wait, wait, found it. It's right there, it's Alan. I mean, find that point. How are you going to do it? Do it. Get it done. Get it done. Find the point of intersection. We're looking for the point in common. Common points between the two graphs. Which means that the x and y values got to be the same x, y value on each of the functions themselves. I'm going to write y equals 3 halves x minus 6. I'm going to write y equals 3 thirds. And what do you think we have to do with it? Set them equal. equal. I'm going to go kind of fast because I know your bell is about to ring. I'm going to distribute that sucker. Plus what? Plus four. Four. Very good. What's my common denominator there? Six. Six. I'm going to multiply through the left-hand side of the equation by six, and I'm going to multiply the right-hand side of the equation by six to eliminate those baby fractions. Okay? This is going to give me what here? my point 
and get something that's on the other graph that's also on the first graph if the two numbers aren't the same. The same. Now, I'm going to wrap this up, and this is the coolest thing. I still got time here, so don't, don't make me flustered here, okay? All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Because when the two points have the same coordinates, when the same when the coordinates are equal to each other, that means the x and the y coordinates are the same on the point of intersection, which is super important. We want to know that. You know the line of y equals x, don't you? It's one of your common functions. It goes right up through quadrant three. y equals x. Three. And goes right one. down through quadrant three, and right up through quadrant two. And look at my line y equals x. Is it reflection? <laughs> it is. What's a good word for that? Reflection over y equals x. So the two functions, a function and its inverse must be? Reflective over y. I want a different word. Reflective is a good word, but I want a mathematical. Symmetrical. Symmetrical. Yeah. Over the line of? Y equals x. Y equals x. So if this is the line of y equals x, and this is g of x is 2 thirds of x plus 6. This is all coming to a head right here. Hold it. And this is f of x equals 3 halves of x minus 6. And all three of these lines, one, two, three lines, go together and hit the same point. Then why in the world was I playing with two fractional functions? And why didn't I simply take one of the functions? and set it equal to the other function x. That would have been simpler. Let's multiply through by 2. What do you get? 3x minus 12 equals x squared. 2x squared. I thought it was an exponent. I thought it was an exponent. Yeah, but you knew what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't multiply one side by 2 and square the other side. So x equals 12. So what? x equals 12. And since you know x and y are the same, you got your point of intersection. Thank you. Yay, count out. <laughs>